This is Diana Sullivan in Austin, Texas. There are lots of beautiful designs that you can make that look like really fancy Aran knitting techniques, but are actually an applique technique on any Japanese knitting machine. Here's one. Here's another. The one I'm going to demonstrate today is called the Helix. And we have to begin this design with an idiot cord or I cord. It's a round cord. The machine today is a Studio 860 mid-gauge and I'm using sport weight yarn. To make an eye cord with a really nice looking end, what you can do is bring out three, four, or five needles. Now this was made with three needles. And what you're going to do is e-wrap the first needle, come around, skip the second needle, and e-wrap the third needle. Then hang a clothespin on the dangling end. After that, you go ahead and thread your machine. And I make sure that all the stitch is knitted through and just kind of get this end a tug. Now I'm going to change the setting on the carriage so that it will slip to the right and knit when it goes to the left. To do that with this studio machine, I just move this lever on the right from the triangle to the dot. That'll make it slip. If you have a brother knitting machine, you want to push the right part button. Now when I go from left to right, it just comes across with the yarn in front and it doesn't knit. And I just go back and forth. Oh, that needs to knit through there. A couple of more times, just using my free hand to apply a little weight. After I've gone back and forth a few times, then I can use a claw weight. So what I'm going to do is knit about six times the length of the sample I'm going to make of this design so that we have a really long piece of idiot cord to work with. You have to have the cord done before you can make the rest of your project. When you have enough eye cord for your project, finish it off just by cutting the yarn and letting it drop. You see, what I do on these is I unravel the eye card cord that I didn't need. So I just make it a little longer than I need. And here's our piece of eye cord. Nice and round, very three-dimensional. I think it helps to see it against my hand, what it's like. Now to make my regular sample, I'm just doing an e-wrap cast on after doing a few rows with waste yarn. After my e-wrap cast on, I'm going to knit four rows. Same tension as the I-cord. I folded my I-cord to find the center and I'm going to be using for this first couple of rows needles number one left and number one right. And what I'm going to do is take the transfer tool and go under one stitch in the center of the I cord. Now stitches have a V shape and I'm going under both legs of the V shape. Let me get in really close so you can see that. So my transfer tool is under both legs of one of the V shaped stitches and I'm going to hang that on number one left and then I'm going to get the next stitch to the right and I'm going to hang it on number one right. Now I'm going to knit four rows. This is so easy you will not believe. What you do is you skip two stitches counting toward the right on this I cord. Put your transfer tool under the third stitch and go over to needle number three right and hang that. Then on the left hand arm of the I cord sticking out, count to the third loop on it and put it on needle number three left. Knit four rows. Now 
Now for each of these cables you do, you need to always start with the left. If you wanted to always start with the right, it would be fine, but you must be consistent. You're going to count five stitches down from where you picked up this stitch. So you go one, two, three, four, five. Get under both legs, hang that on three right. Grab the right hand one, count five stitches down, one, two, three, four, five. You got to get under both legs, hang it on three left, and knit four rows. Now you just do it again. Grab the left hand one, count five down, hang it on three right. Grab the right hand one, one, two, three, four, five. Grab that stitch, five rows down, hang it on three left. Knit five, four rows. Now I'm just going to repeat this sequence, always doing the left one first. Here I am picking up what's going to be my last couple of times. Now when you get to this point and you're out of cord, what you do is on the side that will unravel, just unravel it down to where you are and then take your transfer tool and hang it on the needles. Hang these loops. There are three of them and I need to get all three. This thread is split a little bit. And then over on this side, where it doesn't unravel, I'm going to clip it. I clip it a couple of rows later than where I want to work it down to, and then I just pick the bits out. And I'm going to hang these loops, and again, on the needles. So both ends are quite secure. Later, I'll pull these bits to the back and sew them in. Now I'm ready to bind off. I gave the sample a quick steam to uncurl it so that you could get a better look at the finished work. Now on the back side of the sample is stockinette stitch and there's a little bit of imprinting where I picked up stitches so you get a very smooth back and then on the front you have quite a thick squashy cable you can make the cable a different color from the background or even use novelty yarns to make an unusual textured design.